Hey guys, and welcome back to another standard video here with me, Arnold Mid. We're trying out Golgari Midrange. Yes, indeed, we're going back to that archetype. I've taken some time uh, to figure out this deck list. Uh, I've included some things of the past and some things that have been recently adopted. Uh, we're trying out the Sharp Eyed Rookie as a one off, and we're going back to Blossoming Turt. Oh, it's, uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, <laughs> pronounce that thing. Let's just call it the turtle. Um, the turtle has been first adopted by Javi Dominguez and Anthony Lee. Anthony Lee even making the top eight in the World Championship last September or last October um, with Golgari with uh, four, or sorry, three of the turtle in the deck. And of course, with that, also Mithra's Foundry in the mana base and naturally for Cottage, which is one of the strongest man lands at four power for four mana activation and even exiles opposing graveyards or oh, one card at least and uh, that is quite nice against the recent um, uprising of Timur Ramp so good to have there and yeah we're playing trying out the rookie I think this is a good two drop grows uh, makes clues so provides some value which uh, is always nice. And then the rest of the deck um, is adopting, you know, you, you, the, the usual suspect. I mean, Dread Knight, Deep Cavern Bat, we have Preacher, we have Glissa. No Sentinel of the Nameless City. I'm going with the Trespasser because I want some main deck graveyard interaction for the Team of Ramp deck. And also, I think the Ward is quite good these days. Um, you know, just lots of black mid range stuff running around. So when your opponent has to go for the throw, this creature. And also, uh, this kind of card is a lot better than if they just go for the throw. Go for the throw, it. So, uh, kind of nice play there. Free cut down for go for the throw, of course, ourselves in the deck. I could consider a long goodbye in here as well, just having more answers to um, gigs, I think, is important. Um, but also, of course, Rafine. Cut down, good against the aggressive and fast decks, good against the two drops, but doesn't deal with gigs, which is a bit of an issue I have with the card. Otherwise, you know, it's like. It is, I think every black deck kind of has to play four in a 75 because it's just such an efficient removal spell and so good when you're on the draw. One copy of Duress, a um, little bit of a hedge. The team of ramp deck is popular. Domain really doesn't like to see Duress. I think even against something like Convoke, you can hit Gleeful Demolition on turn one, which is you know very important if you can hit that out of their opening hand. And you can also hit the case of the Gateway Express, what he does call against Convoke. And of course, in any black mid-range matchup, you can always hit a removal spell and make disappear, maybe a vetting announcement, maybe a virtue of loyalty. So I think playing one of the main is, isn't too bad. And, you know, a deck like this really likes to have that one mana uh, discard spell um, to sort of clear the way, disrupt the opponent. We, we don't have counter spells here, so discards get higher uh, in value, therefore. We also have four bats, so we have kind of five discard spells. One copy of Liliana, a little cheesy, uh, a little bit of a hit or miss card, terrible against Convoke, but very good against the Go Bigger decks of the format. Also nice against Timur, I think. When they play an Analyst on this, so you can just play Lily minus and then plus a little bit, disrupt their hand. Although you got to be careful because they can discard lands and then get him back. So there's a little bit of a tension there, but I think nonetheless, uh, especially against Domain, uh, Liliana of the Veil, very good. And also in the black mid-range fights, as long as your opponent doesn't start on turn one with a Spike Glass Siren, you're pretty happy having a Liliana um, to deal with, you know, their two drop if you're on the play or go removal on their two drop. Then they play a free drop, then you play Liliana, kill off their free drop, and from there on, you're a pretty good uh, spot. And then the interesting part um, some people have been adopting Archfiend of the Dross plus three copies of Gix's Command. This is a sort of a combo where you can play the Archfiend on turn four if it lives. You can then pop off the Gix's Command, wipe the board. And for each creature the opponent loses, uh, they lose two life in addition to that. Um, it also gives the Demon lifelink if you want to. 8-8 eight, eight lifelink, pretty powerful. So this is sort of the package that I'm running here in the main deck to beat up on Convoke decks. And I also think that Gix's Command could be quite nice against um, Vetting Announcement, Rafine. Maybe you can hit a Rafine later if, if they play it not on turn three, but a little bit later down the line, and then boom, blows up all those creatures. And also against Demir uh, mid range, besides Gix and Shieldred, uh, all of their creatures have two toughness, uh, sorry, two power or less. 
So I think Geeks' command could really swing things around. It's a flexible effect. You can also just get stuff back from your graveyard or kill your opponent's biggest creature. So I want to give it a shot and combine it here with Turtle and Archfiend. You can really build this deck in a lot of different ways, right? Sentinel of the Nameless City is a good card. Uh, you can run you can run Shieldred instead of the Turtle. Uh, you can run like some Planeswalkers in the main deck, some more like Nyssa. But yeah, I'm just going to go with this list for now and see how it plays out. Sideboard, we're looking at, of course, Katon number four, Tear Sunder, two Liliana of the Veil, uh, just excellent card against a certain number of decks, uh, all the sweeper heavy decks, um, and just in a black mid-range fight, as long as they don't play uh, token makers, I think this card is quite good, for example, in the mirror match or against Rakdos. Tears on a notably exiles the Aklazots, uh, which is quite important, of course. Free Path of Peril might be a little overkill with the Gixxus command, Free Path of Peril, just really making sure that, uh, you know, Toxic, Convoke are, are good matchups. Free Copies of Duress, uh, yeah, the best hand hate spell. One Unlicensed Hers for Timur, one Blot Out, another answer for Aklazots. That is less clunky than a Tear Asunder. Uh, you can always blot out the Preacher of the Schism on turn three. You know, you don't feel too bad about that. But Tear Asunder, not the best answer to a free drop. Um, and then last but not least, we have some Artifact and Enchantment Disruption, Tranquil Frillback, also doubling up as Graveyard Interaction, and then Nissa, of course, a super powerful card. Uh, just like Liliana against those Sunfall decks, especially against Domain. Maybe even in the mid-range fights, I could see this coming in and just taking over. Like, if I'd be playing a Gagari mid-range mirror, I'd probably bring this in, right? Like, there's go for the road and cut down mostly as the answers for, um, you know, creatures. There's not that much Planeswalker removal. If you can drop this and just start popping out horror tokens, um, yeah, I mean, you're going to win that game. <laughs> All right, well, that is a Golgari mid-range. Um, there's lots of ways to build this, lots of ways to build any sort of black mid-range deck, really, right? You can literally combine it with all colors. Maybe not white. We haven't seen all of mid-range, um, but maybe even that is possible, especially with the concealed courtyard we are getting in uh, Outlaws Thunder Junction. Um, so, yeah, let's try Golgari. All right, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand. Nothing to hate about this. Ooh, domain. Eh, okay, we'll see. Looks like a herd migration. I'm just gonna deploy a free two and then hope to draw lands. I, I you, you really cannot think against domain, especially when you're on a draw. Like, there's no way you you draw a card here and go for the value line. That's nice. One thing I like about this deck is that at least the Moss with Dread Knight seems very good in um, black mid-range fights. Just, you know, difficult to kill, uh, provides value, just a phenomenal two drop. I mean, yeah. And you can play two colors. I think, like, for example, Expert Mid-Range also gets a nice two drop that provides value in the form of um what's it called the that denik right um but this one is just in two colors that are good it, it is a black card oh wow edition one in the main deck that is uh good news for me um i guess i'll attack first why not and then we're gonna <laughs> Loviana. Let's go for the throat here. No sunfall, interestingly enough. Um, how do I want to go about things? Do I want to play the Muscle Dread Knight? Really walks into Archangel of Wrath if I do so. I think I'm just going to draw a card here, hopefully hit a land. I did not. If I play this, they play Archangel, I can kill both my Dread Knights. They have a plate of sunfall, so I assume they... They have, they, you know, something must be in their hand. So maybe they have the Archangel. Okay, there's the land. I'm at 14. So I just, just attack first. See what's up. Okay. 
Mm. I play turtle. I have 10 damage, huh? Turtle next turn, I can go for the throw to Traxa. And I activate the land for one mana less. And then it's a 5 5 plus 2 plus 7 plus 3, that's 10. Okay. I could also play. I could play Dread Knight. That's fire. Yeah, I mean, I could play both Dread Knights, but then I can't kill the, tr the Traxa and attack the land. Hmm. I could play Liliana and a Dread Knight. <laughs> hmm. I'm just gonna go with the sh the per turtle. Try my luck that way. Didn't hit a land, unfortunately. If I would have hit a foundry, I might have lethal somehow. I mean, if you play turtle and it doesn't hit a land from the graveyard, that's definitely not good. Okay, no attracts, huh? Okay. Deep cavern bad. Uh, let's attack. Draw a card. Foundry, okay. Let's play Foundry. See what's up. Probably like two attracts or something. Oh, what is this? Ugh. Did not expect that. What is this? Some, some, some weird version of this deck? Why would you play that card? Uh, okay, well, I'll take the lockdown, I guess. You had nine? Huh. I could play Liliana. I, I do want to provide... I mean, I have lethal, theoretically. Because I have... No, the foundry costs two to activate. No, I don't have lethal. So I would... We need to play more to the board, which I can. Six. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. I'll go all in here. This way I have nine power. If they play one of these next turn, I have Lily to minus. Okay, GG. Yeah, if they had Sunfall or Lockdown, it would have been obviously a problem. Uh, but yeah, they didn't, luckily. And this thing goes around... Go for the fraud, which is a big game, actually. It's pretty good. Okie dokie. Alright. That was an interesting version of Domain. Okay. Um, go for the fraud. I reduced two copies. I can't command. Seems pretty bad. I'm gonna go frill back, Terra Sunna, Nissa, uh, Lily, Blood Out, Duress. So I have two slots. I could just kick out the go for the throat altogether. Um, I do have like blood out, tear asunder, and free Liliana to deal with creatures. This deals with the the flesh gorger even. So they have additional one, I guess. Topiary Stomper, Archangel of Wrath maybe attracts. I mean, go for the throat does deal with a lot of things. Uh, this is more four drop. I could cut one of these fours. I think the Archfiend is a little worse. Trespasser isn't the greatest either. Cut a free drop maybe. And Trespasser at least kind of good against removal. Seems fine. All right, let's try this. Domain is definitely a matchup where I'm a bit scared of with Gulgari. I mean, don't have any counter magic, no tight binders. So I'm kind of soft to what they might be doing. Um, but hey, that that might be worth it, ultimately, because like the metagame in standard seems very wide. Like you have Toxic and Convoke and Mono Red as aggressive decks. You have Domain, Timor Ramp as these go over the top big decks. And then you have like control decks as well, right? Some number of control decks. And you have this big blob of uh, mid-range decks in the middle. So you have like three pillars of standard, so it's kind of difficult to build a deck that just covers all the angles. So with Gogari, I'm trying to cover the aggressive angle, which I think is 
the stack should do very easily with this configuration and the mid-range angle I hope to cover as well with like the dread knights and stuff. Um, but yeah, at the same time, also beating Timur and and domain might be difficult. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna okay. They don't have leyland binding. That's good to know. Um, I think I want to get the pressure down. It might be it might be nice to get deep cavern bat down and take like a topiary stomper. It's a really good card for them to have here, but also getting a extra body. Tough call. They have Swamp here. They don't even have a Vert Migration. What's their hand? I'm going to go with the bad, but maybe I should have risked it more with the free two because, you know, just having the extra power is so important. Interesting. Uh... This is just a very weird version of the stack. I, I think I'm just going to take the Virtue maybe. And they play the, the, the lockdown, I guess. Then I can tear some of the lockdown at some point, even in their draw step, which is kind of neat. Interesting. Well, we do it like this. <laughs> That's fine, too. And then we play a Dread Knight. Yeah, don't be afraid of not getting the value out of this card. Like, you don't have to do the adventure. Just play a free two. That's fine. Mm hmm. Attack. Put him to 15. Um, one card, one unknown. They seem to have priority. I think it might be a cycling land. Um, if I play both free twos, I have 10, 12 power. If I play one of them, I have 7 power. They had 14. I have a foundry as well. I think I just play one of them. And here I'm going to be a little greedy, I suppose. And I'm going to actually draw a card. Okay, not a foundry even. Sure. So that's seven damage plus potentially four from these. I can attack and then buff the other one. No, nothing. They didn't even cycle the card, so now I'm a little confused on what they have. Like, they had something. Mm, I think I'm just gonna... Cast a bat and see what's up. Oh, okay, it's it's that deck. It's that, that weird combo deck, I guess. Uh, with, with the Alara card. But if you're playing the Alara card, do you really want to play, play like Lockdown in your deck? Interesting. Okay, so I put him to 8. I have 8 power in play. 1 draw step. Ugh. All right, fine. I guess they'll... They get their Desecrator back? That, okay. <clears throat> I have one, I'm one short here. No. If they, I mean, they can gain two life, I guess. They're at one now, it's gonna be like Archangel of Wrath, I think, is the one card they can draw into that gets them out of this. Oh, okay. They can cast, let's see. Wow, it's a whole lot of cards. Yeah, brambling it up. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Yep. Damn. Wow. Crazy. Right. Well, one life's plenty, I guess. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. One life is plenty. 
This tear asunder would have been a cheap removal spell like a go for the throat. I would have won this game with the Mishra's Foundry. Or if I wouldn't have attacked the Mishra's Foundry, I guess. Because they had Poseidon. I, I kind of knew that. Maybe I should have just played a 3 2 last turn. Like the turn before that when I attacked the Foundry. Could have just played another creature. Frustrating. <laughs> oh well. This is just crazy. They're going completely off here. Ay ay ay. Bramble familiar shots of Alara. Invasion of Alara. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> I mean. Maybe they make a mistake, but if they just double block both guys, then they can't lose. Yeah. All right, close game. Maybe I sequenced wrongly. Instead of yeah, the Dimitrius Foundry attack that cost me in the end. Okay, so it's that deck. Oh. And they just play like one lockdown in their deck. Plus the four Bramble Familiars, I guess, to have some something against Convoke. Alright. Hmm. I think I like my configuration. Nissa is a little worse here because it's like less about grinding. It's more about you know, doing this. I could see cutting in this, uh, or go for the throat, maybe. I could also play the Bramble on turn two, and I want to kill that. Yeah. Small, small misstep with the Mishra's Foundry. I just, I didn't really consider the, the Bosteju. I kind of wasted mana there. And then, yeah, they're one on one life. <clears throat> small things, small things can decide a game. You have to play perfectly. And if I would have played perfectly, I might have won this game. Have a nice curve out here. <clears throat> I could go for Liliana turn three and try to ultimate. Preacher is very appealing though. So they don't really have ramp, right? That's that's the thing. They can't really play invasion. There's the ramp, I guess. I guess I'll just attack first. Turtle. The 12. The Archfiend could be lethal next turn. Kill off the Bramble, they take 2, go to 10, and then I attack for 11. But if they play shards or invasion of a ladder next turn, they Fetch a bramble, find a cemetery, and just things go south for me. So maybe I just slow it down here. A spike? And you think you can win? Oh, I've always hated crazy. No ley line, huh? Let me attack freely. Maybe not. Okay. 
Plus Liliana. Um, Drop it. What do I discard? Maybe the turtle? Nissa. All right. Hmm. I see. So if I take the invasion, they just kind of saw my bat. No, I think that's fine, though. Like if I don't do that, they can counter my trespasser, which I don't want. Maybe I should have taken the Nissa out of the graveyard? Hmm. To, to disrupt them a little. Okay, so you got your invasion, you can cast it. Let's see what you got. I mean, I'm glad in the end that I killed the Bramble. Looked like they had the invasion to go on turn four. All right, that's the Bramble. And a lockdown to hand, and they found the Desert Crater. No! Ah. Without Desert Crater, this is all doable, but Desert Crater is the one freaking crazy card. Hmm. <sighs> okay, what's gonna happen? Maybe they're gonna copy the Desert Crater again, kill a thing. Jesus. Hmm, man. Turn 5 combo kill, huh? Neither did the rest this game. The rest and I would have won. Take the take the one of Lara and they're done. Pretty fragile deck, but you know when it's when it's doing its thing, it's obviously insane. They put a card, they put an artifact from my hand into play. Sick. They kill my Lily off. Yikes. This has ward free. But no reach, I guess. Huh. No reach. Three three cards in the hand. That I don't know of. Well, <laughs> I have no choice. I'm gonna play the demon and hope that's enough. Would be crazy if they can't deal with it. I mean, they need Sunfall Leyline Binding, I guess. Okay. Now they can play that. And the Bramble. Attack me for 11. Yikes. Interesting that with this many cards in hand, it's decided to kill my Dread Knight over my Trespasser. I could just discard a card, right? Seems, seems wrong to not kill the Trespasser there, but who am I to tell them how to play magic? Yeah, got a little lucky there, the opponent turned 5 Alara into Desert Crater. I mean, ah, tough, tough loss, I don't know. Both games were so close. One game I made a misstep, this game I don't know if I could have done much differently, honestly. I mean, I could have played Liliana turn 3 and started plussing instead of playing the Preacher. Maybe that was, that was the right decision. Mm, brutal, brutal. Okay. Uh, I got a good start, but five lands is a lot. Hmm. I'm gonna try it. I don't know. Definitely a close hand. Okay, I got a lot better now.
watching the main deck. I guess. I don't know. I guess it's very good against Demir. People are playing a bunch of Demir. Lissa or Trespasser. Hmm. Trespasser is just a bit better against removal. I can remove counters from the forge. That's kind of funny. They didn't play a two drop, so I kind of put. I kind of have to put them on. On lightning strike, don't I? Didn't play a two drop. I don't know. Interesting decisions. Like these decisions, they decide games, right? So if like, which free drop do I play? The, the game turns out to be entirely different, depending on what, what free drop I play here. I still can't get over the fact I lost against that stupid Alara deck. <laughs> magic, magic, magic. Crimson Poles. Well, I wish I would have played Glissa. <laughs> Yikes. Bond has a pretty grindy version of Mono Red. I don't know if that's gonna treat them very well. Like. I don't know. <laughs> you can't you can only play so many of these cards before stuff like this happens where you just flood on them and then you know you, you won't be able to beat your opponent's mid-range or don't like it doesn't like these cards are good in small numbers against you know like mid-range your opponents or maybe controlling decks. Um but if you flood on them, yeah, geez, opponent has just sorry, but they just misbuilt their deck. Like this is just not not a good idea. They have the lightning strike here. Mm -hmm. Ah, the frenzy. That's nice. Okay. Mm, play Glissa, tap line, pass. Mm -hmm. You always have to have a balance of things. Can't go overboard on on, two, on on one thing too hard. They discard a bloodthirsty adversary. Swift spirit. Yeah, I guess they want to empty their hand for the case. All right, not bad. Hmm, 12 life to give. I'm at 16, I go up to 17, they have like 5, 8 coming at me. Kill the code breaker. I'm at 14 actually. So you can activate a land and gain free. I guess that's a good strat. Like I have enough mana to crack the food. What is this? The trespasser exiles that. The food thingy exiles this. They chomp the glissa. And then they take seven. Okay. Do your worst. I'm at 18 life. A lot of damage coming across.
Like Path of Peril, I will not bring in against this opponent. All these free drops. Okay, wow, I won this game. Hmm. They must have drawn pretty poorly there. Okay, take that. Um, what are we doing? Lily goes. I wonder about the bat. Good enough. Turtle, turtle might be bad here. Just free free is so small. Rookie seems okay. I like cut down. I like tears and I like frill back. Feels like killing off. The case, I guess, pretty nice. Uh, all right, I'll play a Glissa. I want some duress, I think. Nissa destroys artifacts and enchantments. It also hurts me a lot. But right now, I only have two ways to destroy these things. Maybe I need more tear asunder, more frill back. Gixus command. Artfiend <laughs> seems very good against mono red. <clears throat> Gixus command, Gixus command, Gixus command. Does seem kind of nice. I mean, it doesn't do a whole lot against these enchantments, is the issue. You know, buffing a creature, giving it lifelink, don't sack the thing or destroys the, the small stuff. Seems pretty good. Maybe the bat is not great. Yeah, it seems fine. Maybe I can cut a land on a draw. Maybe cut a foundry. And what do I play? Do rest four. Rookie, Nissa. I'll play do rest four. Sure, Nissa destroys these enchantments as well, but like that on the draw, that just seems like a, a bad deal. So I just go full on do rest, and that, that way I can also take them out of their hand. But yeah, maybe I should have a little bit more disenchants in my deck. Sand is not... I'm not happy about the sand. I really want either the res or cut down. But I don't think I can mulligan it. I have an Archfiend, which is great. It's ground drill. I guess I'll play the bat next turn. They make a treasure. Interesting. Okay. Cough. They want to play a cough next turn. Well, no. Cough is a nice one. Good against mid range decks. Play to the board. This searches for lands. If I play my free two, they play cough and kill it. I then can't play Archfiend, the Droid Knight will go away. But with double Archfiend in my hand, I feel like I will never even need this Dread Knight. Like they won't be able to deal with these Archfiends. I will just play Archfiend turn four, Archfiend turn five, cut down a thing, they lose four life. Kill my Dread Knight, I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. Take one, go to 17, play an Archfiend. I mean, Archfiend's just insane against Mono Red. That is just cheating. <laughs> cheating. 6-6. Six, six. Mono Red is equipped well to deal with 5 toughness these days with the Frenzy, but 6? Good luck. <clears throat> They get two cards in hand that I don't know. Okay, they're going for Scroundra. I assume they're going to discard a card here. Looking for answers. Yeah. This cough can deal me six damage. So I have to attack the cough next turn because with a mountain, that actually does the trick. Play another one of these. This. Imagine I have Geeks' command here. I would deal 12 damage by killing all their creatures, by killing free creatures, and then just swing in for 12 in the air. One Geeks' command deals them six. 
No. Don't kill it. So they can... What does Codebreakers say? I think it's six mana, so they can't quite flip it yet. Okay, fine. Oh. <laughs> uh. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. After that game against the Alara opponent, this was very satisfactory. Ah. Okay, yeah, that works for me. Two drop into Glissa. Man, this deck would be good if you had Fortsies. I mean, you don't have Fable, you know, but you still have, uh, like, on, on, two, on two and on three, you have great cards. But, like, Fortsies on turn one, <laughs> you know, you even have cut down, so that's sort of like a fatal push. Fortsies on turn one would really help this deck a ton. I don't know what this is. I guess we'll find out. Or maybe not. Oh, yeah, we do. Ah. The blue white deck. Okay, I guess I'm taking Hardy Gen. Huh. I've, I've seen this. I've never played against it. Faithful Mending. They play like Helping Hand and these. You know, mill, draw spells, discard spells, and they, and they play Monastery Mentor and Curate. <laughs> yeah, I guess why not? Get lost. All right. And then they get either the Jin back or the Mentor. And they'll churn out a couple tokens. Hmm, Graveyard Trespass is kind of decent. Let's attack for one, I guess. I think playing Trespass is a little better than playing Glissa. Glissa is just gonna get get losted. I guess now they are going to just kill my bat and get a Jin into play next turn. Yeah, not great for me. I have the Gixus Commander coming in two turns. I mean, if it would have played a Glissa, maybe it would have changed things. But the Trespasser can also work on the graveyard, which is nice. It's a 2 4 right now. If I, played a, if I attack the Trespasser, I play Curate. Bit risky, isn't it? So you can blow me out by just spinning an instant and blocking. Maybe I was better off playing the, the Glissa. Yeah. Touche, touche. I guess what I could have done is I could have Put a map here if I if it, if it becomes a four four I can attack and then I can play a Glissa instead of the Archfiend. The Archfiend does seem nice though. I mean it's kind of dominating the sport a little bit. Kix's command does double duty in this matchup. It, it cleans up the mentor tokens and the mentor, and it also cleans up the Jin. But five mana is a lot, of course. Hopefully they tap out here, then I can just kick this command and wipe their board. <laughs> so sweet. Just play your charter cores, you know, tap out. Did 
The deck is kind of sweet. I gotta try it. Helping Hand gives you a little bit of a cheaty way, especially with the Mentor. I mean, you can turn four, Helping Hand, a Mentor into play, and then like Sleight of Hand, Consider, Spell Pierce or Fading Hope or something like that to interact with your opponent. Seems kind of cool. Would have Shredder in the deck as well. Come on, tap out. Play another thing. Yeah, Helping Hand on, on Jin. Playing another Jin. Okay, sure. They're going to lose a lot of life. They could attack with their gym. I wouldn't mind that, honestly. I would like I would like that actually. Come on, do it. Do it. Do it. If they do that, they And they would be dead actually if they would have done that. Kicks this command. Such a good card. I definitely got punished for playing the Trespasser. The Glissa would have been a lot better this game. Gaze. Kind of sweet. Building a bunch of lands. That Gix's commands. Jeez. Nasty. Alright. Okay. Yeah, Katan does deal with Shredder and Mentor, sort of. Hmm. Hmm, I don't really have any bad cards in my deck. I mean, I like Duress. I like Liliana. Lordaught is also not too bad against the Jin Or Mentor. Maybe... I don't know, maybe... They kick out the turtle? I think it's reasonable. It's like this matchup is not about grinding or getting extra mana going, it's just about answering your opponent's things so they don't get out of control. Um, just kick out the rookie as well. Play two lilies, maybe maybe a blot out. I'll just play the hearse. It's good. Yeah, hearse has to be good. And do rest. I kind of want more to rest. Ditch a Schmidt's Foundry again. I think it's not unreasonable to do that. Um, Kalissa, Trespasser. I like the creatures. They don't have good removal, especially with free drops. Archfiend, you know, it's not the greatest against Get Lost. Mm, creature is a bit slow, I guess. I don't know how good Liliana is. It's so bad against Mentor Tokens. Hmm. Pretty sure really that's slow. Yeah, I'm gonna try this. Maybe the Trespass isn't great. It does work on the graveyard, but as, as soon as they get Jin down, I. Don't have good attacks with it, as we saw in that game. I think this hand is fine, yeah. Pun mulligans as well. This is a sad death cap glade for sure. I wish I had a swamp here. Yeah, definitely an awkward hand. I'm playing six swamps, four forests. Maybe it has to be seven swamps and three forests. But playing the turtle, you have double green in your deck. Nissa is also double green. Quadruple green, even, if you want to be correct about it. Um, so, yeah. There's the helping hand. Are you saying you have a protection spell for it? This 
disdainful stroke is what they There's the lily. Yeah, my, my mana is really messing me up here. If I had a lily here, this would be amazing. Kind of sad. So playing Mishra's Foundry comes with a downside. I have 26 lands and five, seven of them make non... Seven of them make non... Uh, black mana. So I have 19 black sources. It's a lot. Uh, I wonder if I should get the last card of the hand. I guess I could do rest in. It could be a spell. It is a spell. Nice. All right, that was good. I'm just going to make them sack creature. I don't really need the Liliana. But I like to stay above my uh, life total. Like, if they put me to 17, I'm not going to draw a card. And this way, I'm going to draw a card now. Off you go. And I have Gix's command left for another gen or mentor. Kept two cards on top, okay. Whatever. So what do I take care of? Elves or creatures? Creatures... I can... Like, if they're helping hand, I have hers in place, so that doesn't work. So I guess I'll just take spells. Each opponent sacks a creature with the highest power. I could also do this, I guess. That would also work, but if they have an instant, it wouldn't. So I'm just going to play it safe. And I guess I just put counters on this guy. Preacher is the black fable of the Mirror Breaker, isn't it? Just, I mean, you can one for one it, not like Fable where you can, but like if that pig survives, I don't know, it just feels so good. I'd love to play first. Sure. Turtle hasn't really done much today. It hasn't really convinced me yet. Maybe the free free stats and the randomness attached to milling free, because I mean, you're not putting lands in your graveyard. Right, so there's a little bit of randomness. Do I kill that? Ah, I'm gonna wait. Hmm. And now I wish I would have killed it. Just take the inspector. Take the knight. Take that specter, right? Okay. 
That was a good draw. Take it all. Yeah, maybe you're better served just playing fourth demon or playing shield good. Corn moving into five. And I have two bats. Yeah, that, that hurts, I guess. I could kill one of these to prevent. I'm gonna do that. But I guess we have. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Just to prevent the Knight Errant from coming down this turn. I mean, if they play like Evangelist, I rather would have killed that, I guess. They play the land very fast, not wanting to sacrifice. Even here, I'm like wondering, hmm, which free drop is better? Like, do I rather play Glissard or rather play Turtle? This is a four drop. I mean, I'm gonna go with the Turtle here, but like, yeah, maybe maybe the Turtle is just not. Okay, I did mill land. That's nice. Cost me free to activate combos. All right, there we go. Okay. Lily goes, Trespasser goes, Duress, I'm thinking, oh, I'll, I'll see. Half Peril, come in. Hmm, maybe I want to hatch against Rebrass Forge, what do you just call? Just bring something like this in. The turtle again could be a little bad here. Could also see Duress, maybe. The cut down, probably. Just cutting, cutting the turtle in every match. <laughs> cutting a foundry as well, because why not? Um, all right, I'll play a tear asunder and maybe a second duress. Could also play a, a trespasser. Not the worst blocker in the world. I think trespasser could be better than the rookie. So far, I've been liking this deck. I mean. I feel like the Archfiend stuff is just very good against the aggressive decks. Archfiend kicks his command. Is it is it that good that you want just a hand with five lands and two Archfiends? I don't think so. It's not that good. Ugh. Pain. Pain, pain, pain. Wow, another one lander? Uh, I mean, I guess I'm keeping. Murex turn one. Well, Boros Convoke is going to get a lot better with the with the land and uh, the inspiring vantage, the fast land, little bit of reinforcements, I guess. I'm just gonna. I'm just hoping that they kept the ha a weird hand where they're like reliant on, like maybe they have Knight Errant but no third land, you know? Preacher! Alright, we got a Preacher down. Maybe it's good enough, or maybe I'm gonna get uh, Gateway Expressed into Oblivion. Warden. Novice Inspector. Okay, no Gateway Express. Lots of scrying happening. Keeping a card on top. I had a path of peril. Things would good look good. Sack the clue here. Sack the blood. Sack the clue, right? Not sacking anything. Okay. Oh, they can't sack the blood. The blood you actually have to tap, right? <laughs> it's interesting, right? You have to tap the blood. The clue you don't. It's like, why, why do you think they did that? You know, the, the technique doesn't need to be on it. It's kind of interesting. Oh, okay. 
have mana knight errant. What's going on? Oh, I guess they just want to grow the warden. They can't grow the warden to be a 6 7, can they? Kingdom for Gixus command. Uh, I, never mind. I, I can't cast Gixus command. I, I mean, no, I can't. There's no way I can cast the next turn. Can't draw a card here, so. I need a path. Well. Guess I'm attacking first. Do I attack with the Archfiend? Probably not. Hmm. <laughs> Fifteen life, attack everybody. A block, okay. Take that, um, attack everybody, I block two there, block there, take like six, eight, ten, twelve damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I just need to draw cards, like I'm thinking if I want to play this as a creature or not. Like this way I'm giving myself the out to either draw Gix's command now that I have a fifth land. Or to draw a path of peril, so I have six outs to win this game. Especially if the Archfiend in play, this is just snap win if I have a sweeper. So Archfiend is difficult to kill, like even for a Gateway Express. I mean, they really dunked onto the board this game. Do I just take it that? Or do I jump lock with the bat? Uh, I'm just wondering if I can buy myself another turn. If I jump here, do I get another draw step? So they get a recruiter. Then that's everything's like four. So I, can, I have five blockers. I can block this, this. And then they have. Okay, I can block these five. I can block these four. Free and recruiter, and then I take. I'm at 15, then I take 2, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, I just cannot buy my turn. I set a turn against recruiter. I think I'm just going to take it. Okay, come on, deck. Damn it. Funny thing is, I'm just dying to my own Archfiend now. One more turn. There you go. That's all I got. Maybe they already have lethal. Six blockers. I have a lot of life gain though, actually. I have three more life gain. Oof. That's a problem. That's probably lethal. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this Convoke deck is such a glass cannon, though. Like, the, the, like if I draw a sideboard card, I just cannot win ever. It, 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 it looks insane right now because, like, everything's working for them. I didn't have any just real disruption for them besides the bat on the like one cut down on an Epicure or whatever. Uh. Okay, I don't know if I have enough. I don't think so. All right. I'm at like eight life and I take nine or something. No, I take way more. <clears throat> 
took 12, okay. The rest, the rest, the rest. I mean, they don't have that many targets for the rest. They have Call and Gateway Express and Lethal. It's not nothing. I guess I got punished for cutting the land. Don't do that, Honor. Don't cut the land. Or we just make you moving into five. Go for the throat and all these cut downs. I don't even know. It's just go for the throat, especially is so mediocre in this matchup. Maybe I just want the rookie. Vigilance is kind of nice. If I can grow that thing into a 4 4, that'd be pretty good. There's the rookie. I'm going to keep this. I don't have any sideboard cards, which, you know, I have six of them to draw to, and I have a good curve. Maybe I should play bad and take the Gleeful, I don't know. If they have Gleeful Knight Errant here, I'm obviously going to be very sad. It's kind of insane what this Convoker deck is able to do. Sort of something, it's, it's able to do something that you shouldn't be able to do in, in standard, I feel like. like. Eight power on turn two, plus, you know, the four four draws you two creatures. It's just insane. Okay. Maybe they have the gleeful, but they don't have the... The knight. Yeah, it looks like they have the Gleeful. It's crazy. Also, the, the Warden pumps up so quickly with Gleeful around. This is turn two. Just seven power, casually. Turn three, they attack him with a 4 5 flyer. With vigilance. <laughs> and here you can see why, why Glistening Deluge is not quite good. I mean, if I had Glistening Deluge here, I wouldn't even have been able to kill the Warden. The Path of Peril always kills the Warden. Okay. The rest. A gun draw. So they can freely attack me next turn. Flip off the flip that case. Crazy. I'm kind of hoping they kill the bat. They don't want to. Okay, sure. Oops. Oh wow, what do you got? Not I can't show. Not that. Okay, so I go to seven. Okay, uh, I guess I'll draw a card here. 
I could also draw a card the Dread Knight going to six, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Creature. Go to eight. So I go to four if I block. And then I play Preacher, attack, go to five, but they have six coming through. But if I stay, if I don't block, I go to two. They can just chump block the cottage. They go to four. Wait, so they, I don't know, this is on humans, right? So they can just, yeah. They don't have to pay life. Um, just chomp once and then take four, go to one and kill me. That does work, huh? Go to seven. They only have four. They die next turn to my bat. I'm drawing, drawing the card. Oh no, they have another resolute. Come on! Ah! I had a route. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Yeah, sure, sure. Got it, got it. Okay. Look at that game, huh? Did I? Look, I was one away from diamond. I just stuck in platinum. <laughs> Did not have fun there. Um, so, maybe on turn two, I should have played the bat. Then I would have been able to take the gleeful. I would have been able to draw down, uh, dr dr d d d like slow them down significantly. To be fair, this rookie dealt like nine or twelve damage. I think this game dealt a lot of damage. So if I wouldn't have played that on turn two, you know, I wouldn't have been able to deal that much damage. Gateway Express was was the MVP of this game, in all honesty. I mean, of course, Gleeful was as well, but the Gateway Express killing my preacher for two mana and then just being a hum, pumping our creature like this card is a yeah, there's no doubt about it that you play four copies of this card in this deck. It's just absolutely incredible. Um, doubling up as a removal in Anthem is just insane. The, the, the card quality these days, guys. This is a two-mana card. Think about it. It kills the opposing creature for two mana, which is a decent rate, right? Like, go for the throat costs two mana. And this basically in that deck just deals free four damage very early on. And then it's also a 1 plus 0 him. Like, the, the cards are so insane. Yeah. Close game. Didn't draw a path of power in any of the sideboard games. Opponent moving into five in game one, to be fair. God damn it, man. This convoke deck. If is this just how is this just how good it is? Like why is not everybody playing this deck and crushing with it then? People have people people are able to hate on it. I don't know. I just, maybe I maybe I'm just getting getting the bad luck and I'm getting the, the nutty draws from them. Like there's obviously a, a wide range of draws this deck can have. Well, in any case, I think that's going to be enough for my little Gogari trip here. Um, sadly, I lost against Convoke with my deck that I built in mind with Convoke. Uh, I, I think that is just magic, you know? It's, it's just, like, either Convoke is broken or magic being magic things. Like, your matchup can be 75%, right? That's very, very high, and you will still hit some of those 25%. And now I just hit the 25%er. I'm not saying this matchup is 75% for Gugari, um, but like, you know, it could be that case. And then it still would mean that you lose 25% of the time. And, you know, and you just got to be fine with that. Magic is not a, not a, there's, there's never like the better team wins or whatever. That doesn't exist in Magic. It's, there's always variance involved. The decks are, yeah, can lose and win. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, that's enough from me. Let me know about uh, your favorite build of Gagari. I'm not so sure about the turtle. Um, it didn't look that great, honestly. And yeah, thanks for watching as always. See you guys.